Okay, uh, today we are going to talk about objective 2.4, which is to be able to use, apply, and integrate complex numbers into wider algebraic knowledge. So first we need to go through a few definitions. So our first definition um, says real number, which is what we've been using for as long as you've been doing math. So a real number is any number on the number line. So these are our numbers. Um, they can be positive or negative. They can be whole numbers. They can be decimals. They can be fractions. But as long as they are on the number line, they're going to count as a real number. And the, and the big difference here is we're introducing this other type of number called the imaginary number. And so it's a number that has a negative square root. Okay, and we'll discuss that in a, in a little bit more detail in just a minute here. Um, and then the last definition we want to go through is a complex number, which is a number that has an imaginary, an imaginary part and a real part. So a number with an imaginary and a real component. So we'll discuss that in just a moment. So. What we're going to do first is we're going to define this i right here. So this i is going to be defined as the square root of negative 1. Okay? So that comes from the fact if we, you know, had something like x squared equals negative 1, previously if we were trying to solve that, we would take the square root of both sides and we would get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 1. However, we, before we're just saying things like no solution, but we are going to define the square root of negative 1 as i. So we could have said that the answers here are x is equal to plus or minus i. Okay? And so let's take a second to think about what i squared would be. So if we were to square this, we know that the square root symbol and the square are inverse operations, so they would cancel each other out. Therefore, i squared must be negative 1. Okay, so i is the square root of negative 1, what's written in black, and then i squared is equal to negative 1. So let's do a few of these problems here, where all it's asking us to do is to perform the indicated operations on the complex numbers. Alright, so 4 plus 6i, that's an example of a complex number because we have a real part, what I underlined, underlined in black, and then an imaginary part, which I underlined in pink. Okay, we're adding that to it, or we're subtracting that from another complex number where we have a real part, which is 12. We have an imaginary part, which is negative 8i. So before we get started um, combining those together, we are going to do 4. We're going to get rid of those parentheses, so 4 plus 6i. And then we have this negative sign, so we need to distribute that. And so we have minus 12 plus 8i. And so this is very just... Very simple, like combining like terms. So because 4 and negative 12, those are the real components, we can add those together and we get negative 8. And then the imaginary components here are 6i and 8i, so together that is going to give us 14i. We cannot combine this anymore um, because this has an uh, or is, just has a real component and this has an imaginary component. We can't combine them anymore. So this is a complex number right here and we'll just leave it as negative 8 plus 14i. Let's go ahead and do the example below. It's similar as well. So my real component here is 17. Uh, maybe I should do that in black. Um, so my real component here is 17 and 5. So I am going to combine those like terms together and so I am going to get 22. And then in pink, I'm underlining my imaginary components. So negative 3i plus 20i is going to give us 17i. So again, cannot combine those together to make 39i. We're going to keep it as 22 plus 17i. All right, on this side here, we have some multiplication. And so um, we're just going to distribute like we normally would. So that 2i needs to go to both terms. So 2i times 4 is going to be 8i. And then 2i times negative 3i is going to be minus 6i squared. And then we're just going to use the fact that we know that i squared is equal to negative 1. So instead of writing i squared, I'm going to substitute in negative 1. So we have 
i minus 6 times negative 1. And so we're going to get 8i plus 6. So this right here is my answer. And again, this is a complex number. We cannot combine this anymore together. All right, and our last example is another set of distribution, but this time we got to foil it. So i times 2i is going to give us 2i squared. i times 9 gives us 9i. Negative 5 times 2i gives us negative 10i. And then negative 5 times 9 is going to give us negative 45. Okay? Um, and just like we've been doing before, I need us to make sure that we combine like terms. Okay, so that is going to, so we have 9i minus 10i, so that's going to give us negative 1i. Um, and then this guy right here, instead of writing this as 2 times i squared, again, we know that i squared is equal to negative 1, so instead of i squared, I'm going to put negative 1. So we have 2 times negative 1 minus i minus 45 is going to give us negative 2 minus i minus 45. And then lastly, we can combine this negative 2 and negative 45. So we're going to get negative i minus 47. Okay? It's kind of tricky to see there that this is negative i minus 47. All right, that's it.